Nobody, except maybe sadists, wants cruise ships to crash. The amount of money lost when these things are damaged is insane. In the worst case scenarios, it's enough to bankrupt whole companies, or even whole countries. These are the 20 most expensive cruise ship disasters. Number 20, MV Wilhelm Gustloff. Have you ever wondered what the most deadly maritime disaster was? It's the sinking of the German military ship Wilhelm Gustloff in January of 1945. It resulted in about 9,000 fatalities, making it the worst shipwreck in terms of loss of life. Then again, they were all Nazis, so uh, yeah, okay, it still counts, I guess. Adolf Hitler commissioned the Wilhelm Gustloff in 1936 to serve as a vacation ship for members of the German Labor Front, the Nazi Party's official trade union. Named after a Nazi Party Swiss branch leader, the ship gave affordable leisure trips for large groups of Germans. After its maiden voyage in April of 1938, it became popular. By January 30th of 1945, the ship had been docked for four years when people started boarding. German officials were overseeing the process, but as news spread that the ship was departing, the crowd swelled. Families with children were given priority, but given the cold and fear in the air, several thousand more people managed to sneak on board by some trickery or bribery. So the exact number remains uncertain, but estimates suggest that over 10,000 people were on a ship designed for just 2,000 people. At around 12.30 p.m., the ship set sail from Didnia. Disaster struck just after 9 p.m., when three torpedoes hit the ship, causing it to rapidly list to the port side. Due to a blackout, the ship was in darkness. The starboard side tilted too much for lifeboats to be launched. In the ensuing chaos, some passengers used their firearms on themselves, and people and objects were thrown towards the bow. Within 50 to 70 minutes, the ship sank. About 1,200 people were rescued, but the estimated toll stood at 9,343. Most victims were either hit by torpedoes, drowned, or succumbed to the freezing temperatures of the Baltic Sea, which ranged from negative 18 to negative 10 degrees Celsius that night. Others were fatally injured in the stampedes on stairs and decks. If you don't want to end up on some kind of horror cruise, you better hit like and subscribe right away, or the cruise ship monster will be out to get you. Number 19, RMS Titanic. The Titanic's first trip from Southampton to New York City in 1912 shattered the confidence of those who called the ship unsinkable. It was engineered by Thomas Andrews, and the Titanic was designed to survive collisions with other vessels. However, the iceberg that it hit in the North Atlantic breached five of its 16 watertight compartments. According to experts, had only four been compromised, the ship would have stayed afloat. At that time, the Titanic's lifeboats were intended to transfer passengers to nearby rescue ships rather than take them to shore. When the ship started sinking in the early morning of April 15th, assistance was too far away. Many lifeboats departed the Titanic carrying far fewer people than they were capable of holding, mainly due to poor crew coordination. There was only enough lifeboat space for about a third of the people on board. As a result, over 1,500 lives were lost either on the ship or in the frigid water while awaiting rescue. Recent studies suggest that a pre-existing fire in the ship's hull weakened the steel, making it more susceptible to iceberg damage. But how about this? The Titanic II, a modern replica, is currently under construction, backed by Australian billionaire Clive Palmer's Blue Star Line. Will you catch your friendly narrator on board the Titanic 2? No, no, jeez, of course, oh my god. In fact, if you're ever really trying to keep me off of something, just name it the Titanic. Number 18, Carnival Cruise Line's Triumph. The Carnival Triumph ship suffered a big fire, and that left it stranded at sea for nearly a week before it was towed to Mobile, Alabama. Passengers had quite the horror stories to tell lack of air conditioning, no running water, and hallways filled with human waste. Living conditions were reduced to minimal food and water, and it got nicknamed the Poop Cruise, as folks resorted to using bags for their bathroom needs. The ordeal made some think of scenarios straight out of the TV show Survivor, and the novel Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Due to an engine fire, the ship was stuck near the Yucatan Peninsula. 
people quickly began hoarding food, stacking up cereal boxes and grabbing cakes. When the toilets ceased to function, the ship's 3,143 passengers and 1,086 crew members had to use sinks and then red plastic bags. Sewage began to run down the walls, creating slip hazards and a terrible stench. One passenger said it felt like a hot porta potty. Adding insult to injury, raw sewage began to seep into living areas, posing serious health risks. So that's how it ended up being the poop cruise because of these unfortunate conditions. The plan was to tow Carnival Triumph to Progreso in Mexico, but ocean currents shifted the ship north, so it ended up docking in Mobile, Alabama instead. Number 17, Costa Concordia. The Costa Concordia was a beast of a passenger ship, featuring 17 decks, six restaurants, a three-story theater, and room for 4,200 tourists. On January 13th of 2012, the ship's head maitre d' Alex Tivoli asked Captain Francesco Chitino to sail unusually close to the island of Isola del Giglio. Tivoli, a native of Giglio, wanted to give a special salute to his hometown. Chitino complied, but he turned off the ship's computer guide and system alarm, thinking he knew the waters well enough to navigate by sight. Have you ever heard about that movie, Dumb and Dumber? Yeah, they could have made it about these two guys right here. The first mate later said Chitino had forgotten his glasses in his cabin, so no navigation and also he couldn't see. Ultimately, the ship struck an underwater rock, capsized and sank, resulting in nearly 32 fatalities. Chitino's most egregious action? He abandoned the ship while 300 people were still on board. A Coast Guard officer even ordered him back onto the sinking ship to no avail. Though convicted of manslaughter, Chitino didn't start his 16-year prison term until May of 2017, after multiple appeals. The financial toll of the disaster was around a billion dollars, far exceeding the ship's initial construction cost of two million dollars. This included compensating victims and the cost for refloating, towing, and scrapping the ship. Costa Cruises offered up to 11,000 pounds to each passenger for compensation covering all expenses, including the cost of the trip itself. About a third of the survivors accepted the offer. Number 16, SS Eastland. Known as the Speed Queen of the Great Lakes, the SS Eastland was set to ferry Western Electric employees, along with their families and friends, for a day trip across Lake Michigan to Michigan City, Indiana. But the joyous occasion took a tragic turn. The ship tipped over in the Chicago River, right next to the Clark Street Bridge, without even leaving the dock. With over 2,500 people on board, the calamity led to the death of 844 individuals, including 22 complete families. George Hollis, who was 20 years old at the time, and later became a legendary figure in American football, narrowly escaped the tragedy. He was late to the dock and arrived after the ship had capsized. Initially reported as dead, Hollis was actually unharmed. Ralph Brizolara, a friend who would later work with the Chicago Bears, and his brother were on the ship, but managed to escape through portholes. Number 15, Exxon Valdez. On the night of March 23, 1989, the Exxon Valdez oil tanker set sail from Valdez, Alaska, heading to Long Beach, California. It was loaded with 53 million gallons of crude oil from Prudhoe Bay. However, just after midnight on March 24th, the ship collided with Bly Reef, a notorious hazard in Alaska's Prince William Sound. The impact ripped open the hull and unleashed about 11 million gallons of heavy oil into the water. At the time, it was the largest oil spill in U.S. waters. The spill's timing and location? They could not have been worse. It took place in an ecologically sensitive area and during a particularly vulnerable time of year. Initial attempts to contain the spill were unsuccessful. Over the ensuing months, the oil slick eventually stretched over about 1,300 miles of coastline. Before the disaster, Prince William Sound was a pristine, wildlife-rich area. The spill drastically altered that, causing widespread animal Estimates suggest that around 250,000 seabirds, 300 seals, 250 bald eagles, and 22 killer whales perished due to that spill. Economic losses were also staggering, with some reports putting the cost at around $2.8 billion. About 40% of the sea otters inhabiting the Sound were and their population didn't recover to pre-spill levels until 2014, 25 years later. Number 14, SS Morro Castle. 
It's actually really surprising that the tale of the SS Moro Castle hasn't been adapted into a horror film yet. Even Fritz Lang, a renowned director, started working on a project called Hell Afloat about the event, but it never got off the ground. Between 1930 and 1934, the ship typically ferried more than 480 passengers from Havana to New York City. On board, guests could escape the woes of the Depression and Prohibition, freely enjoying alcohol. However, the voyage back from Cuba in September of 1934 was fraught with misfortune. On September 7th, Captain Robert Wilmot complained of stomach issues after dinner, retired to his cabin, and later apparently from a heart attack. Chief Officer William Warms took the helm, but things went from bad to worse. Around 3 a.m. on September 8th, a fire broke out in a storage locker. The crew's efforts to douse the flames were woefully inadequate, and the situation quickly spiraled out of control. Many crew members abandoned ship, leaving passengers to fend for themselves in dark, smoke-filled corridors. Some desperate individuals jumped the ship and drowned. By the next morning, the burning wreckage of the SS Moro Castle had run aground in Asbury Park, New Jersey. First responders on the New Jersey shore awaited the arriving lifeboats filled with survivors. Out of 549 people, 86 passengers and 49 crew members lost their lives. Number 13. RMS Empress of Ireland In May of 1914, visibility was poor in the St. Lawrence River when the ocean liner Empress of Ireland collided with the 6,000-ton Norwegian vessel Storsand. Carrying 1,477 people, the accident resulted in the deaths of over 1,000 individuals. At the time, it was the second deadliest cruise disaster, coming in just after the Titanic. Nowadays, the wreckage of the RMS Empress of Ireland rests on the riverbed near Rimouski, Quebec, tipped on its starboard side at a 65-degree angle. The ship originally sailed the North Atlantic route from Liverpool to Quebec. Though it was equipped with 42 lifeboats, only four could be launched due to the ship's leaning on the starboard side, which led to panic and confusion among passengers. To make matters worse, the freezing conditions and failure to seal the doors and portholes escalated the crisis. Number 12. MTS Oceanos The MTS Oceanos, built by a French firm, began its service life in 1952 and was later acquired by a Greek company in 1976. On August 3rd of 1991, under the command of Captain Ioannis Arvarnas, the ship left for East London, South Africa, and continued northward toward Durban. Facing 40-knot winds and 30-foot waves, the unusual deck party featuring British artists Moss and Tracy Hills was moved to an indoor lounge. As the night wore on, sea conditions worsened, causing the ship to sway. An explosion sounded, attributed to an unfixed waste removal system, leading to a loss of power and water flooding the generator room. With the generator shut down, the ship was adrift. Emergency calls were made, and South African planes, along with a Dutch container ship, came to the rescue. Interestingly, the captain and several crew members were among the first to be evacuated leaving the entertainment staff to coordinate rescue operations for the passengers. By the time the Oceano sank nose first, all 571 people on board were safely rescued. Alvin Collison, a South African cabaret artist performing on the ship, did what he could to improve the grim situation. To lift spirits, he sang to passengers as the ship was going down. He later said he was in the middle of singing Bye Bye Miss American Pie when he realized the next line was This'll be the day that I die, which prompted him to swiftly change the tune. Number 11, Seawolf Ferry. On the morning of April 16th of 2014, the MV Seawolf Ferry sank while en route from Incheon to Jeju in South Korea. The distress call was sent at 8.58 when the 6,825-ton ship was roughly 1.7 miles north of Byung Pyong Do. Tragically, 306 out of 476 passengers and staff on board lost their lives. Around 250 of the deceased students were from Danwon High School in Ansan City. More than half of the 172 survivors were rescued by fishing boats and commercial vessels that arrived 40 minutes before the Korean Coast Guard. A lot of Koreans had serious questions about the actions of the ferry's captain and most of the crew. Criticism was also fired at Chong Jae Jin Marine, the company operating the ferry, and the regulatory bodies that were supposed to oversee it. 
Public frustration was exacerbated when it was revealed that the government and South Korean media spread false information, claiming that all passengers had been saved. Anger further escalated when people learned that the government had declined foreign assistance and minimized the disaster's severity to protect its public image. Legal repercussions followed. On May 15th of 2014, the captain and three crew members were charged with while 11 other crew members were charged with abandoning the ship. Number 10. Star Princess – Fire on Ship In March of 2006, the Star Princess cruise ship was sailing off the coast of Jamaica with 3,813 people on board. Everyone thought it was going to be a typical voyage, but that year, the Star Princess experienced a major fire. Investigators from the Marine Accident Investigation Branch later determined that discarded cigarette butts on a deck were most likely the cause. At the time, smoking on balconies was permitted, but tossing cigarette butts was definitely not. An ashtray was provided for guests to use. The cigarette butt didn't ignite immediately. It smoldered on the deck for about 20 minutes before setting the chairs, walls, and floor of the balcony ablaze. The fire spread rapidly, even breaking the glass doors leading to some balconies and then entering the rooms. While the fire itself didn't actually spread too far, the smoke did, causing issues for both passengers and crew who were trying to evacuate the area. The blaze raged for an hour and a half, during which 297 rooms were either damaged or destroyed. Tragically, one person died from smoke inhalation while asleep, and another 13 needed medical treatment due to smoke exposure. It wasn't until around 4.30 that the fire was completely extinguished. Number 9. Pacific Sun – Harsh Storm In 2008, a New Zealand cruise ship, the Pacific Sun, got caught in a nasty storm featuring 25-foot waves and winds at 50 knots. Passengers were tossed from one side of the ship to the other, and even gaming machines tipped over, striking people. A total of 42 passengers ended up injured, with some sustaining broken bones. The ship took a full 24 hours to reach its intended docking location, encountering waves so powerful, they reached the ship's fifth deck. The front desk staff were seen clutching their desks and computers right before the larger wave struck. Shortly after, both staff and guests were sent tumbling across the floor, unable to prevent their falls. At the time of the storm, the Pacific Sun was returning from an eight-night journey to the island of Vanuatu. It was evening, and people were settling down for dinner when the tempest hit. One passenger likened the experience to being in a disaster movie. Tables, chairs, and people were hurled from side to side, causing multiple injuries when either furniture slid or individuals were slamming against columns. In an attempt to make amends, P&O offered affected passengers a 25% discount on their next cruise, but I have a feeling there won't be a next cruise for a lot of them, even with that generous discount. Number 8. Lewis Majesty – Rogue Waves In 2010, the Lewis Majesty cruise ship faced three towering 30-foot waves while sailing in the Mediterranean Sea. The ship was en route from Barcelona, Spain to Genoa, Italy. These waves were labeled as abnormal, and their impact was devastating. Two people lost their lives. The waves shattered windows and communal areas of the ship, adding to the casualties. In addition to the two 14 people were injured and received medical attention on board. Upon the ship's return to Barcelona, these individuals were transferred to a hospital for further treatment. One person even sustained broken legs. Rogue waves, alternatively known as freak waves, monster waves, and a whole lot of other names, are enormous, and they're unpredictable. They're surface waves that seem to appear out of the blue. These waves, they pose serious risks to ships of all sizes. They differ from tsunamis, which are typically triggered by other events like earthquakes, and they're often less visible in deep waters. At one point, they were considered mythical due to a lack of evidence, but rogue waves are now confirmed as genuine natural phenomenon. The maritime community has long insisted their existence, though, and I guess that makes sense because if you've seen one, then you know it exists. The first scientific validation of a rogue wave came in 1984. It was recorded by the Gorm platform in the middle of the North Sea. Number 7. Celebrity Mercury – Norovirus Outbreak In February of 2010, 413 passengers aboard the Celebrity Mercury cruise ship fell ill with stomach flu caused by the norovirus. 
Between 2010 and 2015, a total of 15 such outbreaks occurred on various cruise lines. The celebrity Mercury gained notoriety for making one in five of its passengers sick on its last voyage. As a result, the ship was taken out of service for an unusual 72-hour period, a step not commonly taken by celebrity cruises. All of the Mercury's recent journeys started in Charleston, South Carolina, and each one saw a significant number of people getting sick. In an effort to combat what's believed to be a norovirus outbreak, Celebrity is ending one cruise early and delaying the start of the next, all while giving the entire ship a deep clean. Due to governmental regulations that mandate strict reporting, outbreaks like these on cruise ships often received heightened attention. Plus, nobody wants to think about losing a day or two from their week-long vacation to explosive vomiting. Number 6. MS Explorer The MS Explorer also known by the name MV Explorer, was a Liberia-registered cruise ship with the distinction of being the first of its kind to navigate the icy waters of the Antarctic Ocean. And it also holds the unfortunate record of being the first cruise ship to sink in those waters, which happened on November 3rd of 2007. Thankfully, all passengers and crews were safely rescued. On the morning of November 23rd of 2007, Explorer began taking on water near the South Shetland Islands in the Southern Ocean. typical stormy area, although it was calm at the time. Passengers gave varying accounts. Some reported hearing a loud bang, while others either heard nothing or just the routine sound of ice crunching. Around 3 o'clock, a passenger reported seawater entering their cabin. Some accounts suggested the ship struck an iceberg on its starboard side, while the crew was assessing damage from an initial impact on the same side. A report praised the master and crew for effectively organizing the passengers and facilitating their evacuation, stating that their actions likely saved lives. Number 5. Norwegian Dawn Cruise Ship In 2015, the Norwegian Dawn Cruise Ship found itself stuck after running aground in Bermuda, with over 3,500 people on board. The ship lost power just as it was pulling out of King's Wharf in Bermuda. According to officials, a minor steering glitch caused the ship to veer off course and hit a sandbar. Luckily, after six hours, high tide came to the rescue and lifted the ship off the sandbar. Following underwater inspections that showed no significant damage, the ship was given the green light to continue its journey to Boston. The Norwegian Dawn has been sailing the seas since 2002, operated by the Norwegian Cruise Line. It was the second ship of its kind to be constructed at the Mayer Werft shipyard in Papenburg, Germany. The ship's sister vessel, the Norwegian Star, entered service in November of 2001. Number 4. MS Estonia On the evening of September 27th of 1994, the cruise ship MS Estonia set sail from Tallinn, Estonia's capital, bound for Stockholm with 989 passengers and crew on board. The ship was filled with people from various backgrounds, some traveling for work and others for leisure. Many were looking forward to enjoying the amenities like the ship's shops, pub, and pool. However, the ship never reached Sweden. In the early hours of September 28th, it sank around 22 nautical miles from the Finnish island of Uto, claiming the lives of more than 82 people in less than an hour. Many were trapped inside the vessel. In 1997, the Joint Accident Investigation Commission issued an official report stating that the sinking occurred because the bow visor, the front section of the ferry that opens to allow cars to board, fell into the water due to failed locks exacerbated by wave conditions. The report concluded that the ship capsized due to large amounts of water entering the car deck, loss of stability, and subsequent flooding of the accommodation decks. However, the explanation of the overall handling of the report faced criticism from many survivors and family members of the deceased, predominantly Swedes and Estonians. They felt the report left many questions unanswered. Despite the JAIC's official findings, skepticism remains, especially among survivors. Recent discoveries at the crash site have also reignited questions about what really transpired on that faithful autumn trip. Number 3. RMS Lusitania on May 7th of 1915, a U-boat from the Imperial German Navy sank the RMS Lusitania around 11 nautical miles off the old head of Kinsale, Ireland. The Lusitania was a British-registered passenger ship, and the attack took place in a maritime war zone declared around the UK. 
This incident occurred shortly after Germany announced it would engage in unrestricted submarine warfare against British ships in response to an Allied naval blockade against Germany and other Central Powers. Passengers were warned before leaving New York that traveling to the area on a British ship could be risky. The ship was torpedoed by a U-20 submarine. It was commanded by Captain Walther Schwager. It sank astonishingly fast. It took just 18 minutes after the first torpedo struck. A second internal explosion also blew another big hole. Out of the 1,266 passengers and 696 crew on board, only 761 survived. And in an important turning point in world history, 128 of those who perished were Americans. The incident turned U.S. public opinion against Germany and influenced the U.S. to join the war. Images of the sinking were widely used in U.S. propaganda. Then, as now, the U.S. public don't like going to war, but the U.S. government absolutely loves it, so there's always a little arm twisting that's needed. Both the U.K. and the U.S. conducted investigations into the sinking, but these were hindered by wartime secrecy and efforts to place full blame on Germany. At the time it sank, the Lusitania was carrying a significant amount of military supplies. Military ammunition has been discovered in the wreck, and debates over the ship's sinking continue to this day, with many theorizing that it was something of a false flag to secure U.S. entry into World War I. Number 2. St. Philibert In June of 1931, disaster hit a modest tour ship departing from the Loire River near the French coast. The ship left near the port of Nantes, carrying 500 passengers, primarily workers and their kids. The vessel was dangerously overloaded, carrying 80% more weight than its capacity. The situation worsened when the ship encountered unprecedented rough seas and weather, which was especially surprising given it was summer. The captain and crew were overwhelmed, unable to take effective action. Of the 500 people aboard, a mere eight survived the horrific ordeal. During the intense storm, passengers sought refuge near machinery casings. This weight and balance caused the ship to tilt to its starboard side, and it eventually capsized when hit by a massive wave. The crew and leadership were at a loss, and the ship was also poorly equipped in terms of communication tools. Two years later, in 1933, a court case took place. The families of the deceased were unsuccessful in their legal fight, and the ship's owners walked away without any penalties. Number 1. SS Andrea Doria The SS Andrea Doria was a high-end transatlantic vessel owned by the Italian line. First hitting the waters in 1953, she gained fame mostly because of her 1956 sinking, an event that was widely covered by the media. Remarkably, 1,660 out of 1,706 people on board were saved. Named after the 17th century Guianese Admiral Andrea Doria, the ship had a gross tonnage of 29,100 and could accommodate around 1,200 passengers and 500 crew members. She was often described as Italy's safest, largest, and fastest ship of the era. Launched on June 16th of 1951, her home port was Genoa, and her maiden voyage kicked off on January 14th of 1953. On July 25th of 1956, as the Andrea Doria neared the coast of Nantucket, Massachusetts, en route to New York City, she was hit by the Stockholm, a passenger liner of the Swedish-American line going the opposite direction. The Andrea Doria was struck on her port side, causing her to take on water and tilt severely. This made half of her lifeboats unusable. Despite the shortage of lifeboats, the ship managed to stay afloat for over 11 hours after the collision. The crew's composed demeanor, improved communication measures, and the timely intervention from other vessels helped avert a catastrophe on the scale of the Titanic. While 1,660 people were rescued, 46 lives were lost due to the incident. The ship eventually capsized and sank the following morning. This remains the most severe maritime disaster in U.S. waters since the Eastland went down in Chicago in 1915. So, which one of these disasters did you think was the most shocking? Would you ever go on a cruise after seeing all this? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.